back to another place that's long forgotten in the Neverwinter Realm. This place is really, really nice. It has one of the coolest looking castles that I've ever seen inside of Neverwinter. Um, and then it has the big castle up top with like fire uh, creeping out the top and lightning and the black cloud over it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it looks really cool. And it's a, another one of those forgotten places that most people don't ever go to. And uh, that place that I'm in right now is Helm's Hold. And there's literally nine people total in two instances here. Like nobody comes here anymore unless you're, you know, new to the game and starting out. Like what reason do you have to come back here? And, um, yeah, I don't know if you guys have been realizing that in a bunch of my previous videos, I talk about, um, the topics while I'm in, like, an area that nobody goes to anymore, and that's, like, kind of a hint at something I'm saving for a video coming up soon. So, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the topic of this video. So, what is going on, YouTube, the assist man? I'm coming back at you guys with another Neverwinter YouTube video. Inside of this video, what I want to talk to you guys about is a question I get asked a lot, especially since I've been doing a lot of videos like the top five armor enchantments, the top five utility slots, and stuff like that. People always keep asking me, make a video about what is the best weapon enchantment to use. And I've always told people, you know, I, I kind of really can't make a video about that because it's, because it's very, very subjective and there's not a clear cut answer due to you know what weapon enchantment to use what's the best in slot what's the best weapon enchantment to use there's not a clear cut answer because it has a lot to do with what class that you actually play but in this video i'm going to go over what i think are some of the better if not the best weapon enchantments for specific classes i'm going to be covering it more on the dps side not on the tank support side but i will give you guys you know tank weapon enchantments and and um uh, cleric weapon enchantments you can use as well that i see a lot of my friends using and some things i think that are you know pretty good to use in the game so let's go ahead and get into it real fast if this um video helps you in any way shape or form please go ahead and take a second right now and hit the thumbs up like on this video you guys killed it again on my last video with nearly 200 likes on my previous one so thank you guys so much so please go ahead and hit the thumbs up like and if you have not subscribed to my channel man please go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well and make sure you turn on the little bell next to subscribe for notifications so you guys will get notified exactly when I put out new videos and go live on YouTube. So let's go ahead and talk about weapon enchantments. Here's the issue is that like I just said a little bit ago, there's no clear cut winner depending on what class you play because one weapon enchantment could be extremely good and the best one to use for one class. But it could be, you know, terrible for another class. So, you guys know I really don't play support. I really don't play tank. Um, so, as far as it goes with, you know, tank weapon enchantments and support weapon enchantments, you know, for clerics, let's really just talk about clerics and, like, guardian fighters and paladins. Unfortunately, I really, really can't help you in aspect in, you know in that category because I've never played a cleric I've never played a paladin before you know I have a paladin at level 70 but he's just there for a leadership farm dude you know I've never honestly played him as far as like you know weapon enchantments for paladins I, I really really can't tell you I've heard terror is actually really really good for paladins I don't know if that's true I know for D.O.'s uh, and a lot of clerics that the Plague Fire enchantment is considered to be one of the best ones because of the stacking debuff that it applies to the enemy. So for clerics, you know, maybe Terror is really good. But like I said, I wish I can give you guys more information on the tank aspect and on the, the you know, the DC aspect. But unfortunately, I can't because I don't really know much about those classes at all. But as far as it goes for DPS classes, I could tell you what I feel is probably the best in slot enchantment for each class and the reasons why. And I am also going to tell you guys what I think is probably the best overall jack of all trades, most undervalued and, and underappreciated weapon enchantment in the game as well. So 
let's go ahead and let's talk about some certain classes. Let's talk about the Great Weapon Fighter. A lot of people like to use the Great Weapon Fighter, and it's a really, really good class. It does a lot of damage, and a lot of damage when it's at wills. So for the Great Weapon Fighter, I feel that you really have three choices. So for a Great Weapon Fighter, you have a couple of different choices. But in my opinion, what I think are the top two for a Great Weapon Fighter is going to be either the Unparalleled Prominence Enchantment or the Unparalleled Fae Touched Enchantment for single target, and this is where it gets weird too, because you also have to look at weapon enchantments from the aspect of single target and area of effect and multi-target, you know, damage. For a great weapon fighter, the Unparalleled Prominence Enchantment is probably the only class you want to use it on due to its stacking shield thing and the great weapon fighter having, you know, the shield that they're able to get so you won't lose the stacks as much. A lot of great weapon fighters feel that the Unparalleled Prominence Enchantment is best in slot for them and it really might as well be because not only does it do a ton of weapon damage for single targets, but it actually does a lot of multi-effect, area of effect target damage for, you know, all the other targets around you. Once you reach the 20 stacks, it converts to prominent and it deals more weapon damage as radiant damage to all enemies within 40 feet of you every three seconds for 12 seconds. So it's basically like giving you four ticks of extra damage. It's really good, but only on a great weapon fighter. As far as it goes too, you could also use the Fate Touched Enchantment. Now I haven't got like a specific word on the streets right now from different great weapon fighters that I know of and speak to. It seems like a lot of them are using the Prominence and a lot of them are using the Fate Touched. And really, I think you could use either one of them and I don't think you're going to be doing like a massive amount of damage difference between the two. So for single target damage on a great weapon fighter, you're probably going to try to want to try to use a Fate Touched or a Prominence Enchantment. Now, if you're talking about doing a lot of AoE damage, then there is pretty much a really, really, really good enchantment you can use as well. And that's the Unparalleled Lightning Enchantment. Now, the Unparalleled Lightning Enchantment is not only good for AoE. It does pretty well on single target as well. Because if there are no enemies to chain to, you do 50% more lightning damage. And that lightning damage has an opportunity to crit and could be, you know, multiplied by buffs and debuffs and all kinds of other things. So it does a lot. Plus, it reduces your cooldowns a lot too. It says additionally, all cooldowns are, redu are reduced by 2% for the first lightning strike, plus an additional 1% for each chain. So if you're hitting enough with this, you could do, you know, a lot of damage. You could chain a lot of targets and do a lot of damage to AoE targets, and you could reduce your cooldowns significantly. The problem with this is that since they fixed it, since it used to multi-proc for control wizards and all kinds of stuff back in the days, it's really only good for, you know, classes that use a lot of at-wills really, really fast and could at actually attack fast to make sure that they're chain lightning as many enemies as possible. So for a great weapon fighter, for single target damage, I don't really think you could go wrong with a prominence or a fey touched. And for AoE and for, you know you know, single target as well, you could do a lightning enchantment. If you really, really want to do the best of both worlds, you want to have two. You want to use your lightning enchantment for AoE and then switch it out when you get to the boss and put on your prominence or your fate touched enchantment. That costs a lot more money, but that would be the best overall thing to do. If any of you guys that are professional great weapon fighters want to chime in and let me know what you think between Fae Touched and Prominence, I'd like to hear your um, side of the story because like I said, I've talked to and seen a lot of different great weapon fighters and nobody really has a for sure answer of which one are they using, Prominence or Fae Touched. I know a lot of great weapon fighters like the Lightning Enchantment, but you know, it all comes down to price at the same time too. Price is a big, big variation and difference in when you know, seeing what weapon enchantment you want to go with. Because, for instance, on the Xbox right now, like, the cheapest unparalleled prominence enchantment is 6.2 million, and then the next cheapest one is 6.5, and then 6.8. 6.8 looks like, you know, the average price. You know, somebody just got a couple up for cheap. While a Fate Touched enchantment, you know, you can get the cheapest one right now for 4.5 million. So, you know, it's a lot cheaper. And a Lightning enchantment, you can get those for significantly, you know, cheaper. Down to, you know, 3.8. 3 million it seems like is the cheapest one right now 3.39 so definitely a lot of options you can go with now when it goes to other classes like the hunter ranger 
Um, depending on, you know, it, and like I said, it all depends on what kind of build you play. Most Hunter Rangers that are specced for DPS and want to just do raw damage and a lot of damage are specced as Combat Hunter Rangers. And if you're talking about the best overall for Combat Hunter Rangers for single target, I think once again, it's probably going to be the um the unparalleled fate touched enchantment because you could do a lot of attacks with it really really quickly so on and so forth it does a lot of damage for you and that's going to be for single target but for multi-target the best will probably be the lightning enchantment and that's if you want to go ahead and swap things out left and right and you know if you want to have both have the lightning enchantment just like i said for the great weapon fighter and use that for aoe and then swap to your fate touched enchantment for a boss you can do that if you like but you still can't go wrong while you know using the lightning enchantment it's you know kind of like a jack of all trades it's, it's a pretty pretty good weapon enchantment to use and based around cost you know there is a difference that, you know, is associated with it. Like I said, you can get an unparalleled lightning enchantment right now for, you know, 3.4 million, while the cheapest, you know, Fey Touched is over a million AD more. So it's really, really completely up to you. Um, and that's, like I said, this is a, one of the reasons why I've never, you know, really spoke on this topic and I'm just giving a video to cover it because I get asked a lot. It all depends on what class you play. It all depends on what build you play. It all de depends on how you play your class. Um, for Trickster Rogues, you have a couple different options as well, and it's going to follow the same suit. It's either going to be the Unparalleled Fey Touched Enchantment for single target, or it's going to be the Unparalleled Lightning Enchantment for multi-target. The Trickster Rogue, the Hunter Ranger, the, the Combat Hunter Ranger, and the Great Weapon Fighter, I think personally are the only three classes that could really, really benefit from the Unparalleled Lightning Enchantment. Just due to the fact that they use a lot of at-wills and they attack very, very fast. So by doing that, you'll be able to actually get more lightning chains on targets than any other class in the game. You could have your lightning, you know, chain out a lot faster to, to hit multiple targets. Now, one other class I do want to talk about is currently the class that I, you know, main right now, which is the Control Wizard. Um, Control Wizard enchantments, really, you're looking at kind of like the same exact thing, almost. There's going to be some changes coming up that I think, and this is another thing, you know, this is still based upon Mod 14 right now on console. Mod 15, a lot of classes are getting changed and so on and so forth, so there's going to be some new changes and new things you could test and try with weapon enchantments. But currently for Control Wizards, you have some options as well. For single target, I still think that you might be pretty good, you know, using the Fey Touch enchantment. But for AoE, I, you know, you could use a lot of different things. But, in the new mod, a lot of our powers get substantially, you know, upgraded with damage, and we will be using a lot more single target powers that will be doing a lot more damage. So in mod 15, when I'm reading and hearing from people, and it's still good to use in mod 14 right now, is the weapon enchantment that I'm using right now on my control wizard, which is the unparalleled dread enchantment. And it basically says you deal 55% weapon damage as necrotic damage to target enemies every second for 4 seconds when you activate a power. You also reduce the defense of PvP targets by 45% and the damage resistance of PvE targets by 5%. Once every 5 seconds, you reduce the target enemy's damage resistance by 5% for 4 seconds when you land a critical strike. And counter powers critical severity increased by 80%. Why this is good is not only do you get 55% weapon damage as necrotic damage every second for 4 seconds when you activate any power at all, but you also reduce the damage resistance of your PvE targets by 5%, so it's a 5% damage debuff, and once every 5 seconds, you reduce your enemy target damage resistance by an additional 5% for 4 seconds when you land a critical strike. And you should have 100% critical strike on your class. So, this is probably going to be the best in slot enchantment for control wizards and maybe some other classes that got significant damage buffs to single target powers. In mod 15, I don't know of all the classes and I don't know the changes to them, but I do know that what control wizards in mod 15 that 
single target powers got significantly buffed up, especially disintegrate. So by using this and getting an additional 80% more crit severity, this thing is probably going to be best in slot for control wizards. As a matter of fact, a lot of the top rated control wizards that I see on PC um, are already talking about that this is the best enchantment to use in mod 15. So we'll just have to wait and see. I think it probably will be as well. And it does a damn good job in mod 14 as well. And it's actually pretty cheap right now. So it might go up in value once people start realizing you know how good this thing is going to be in mod 15 for control wizards and maybe some other classes as well trickster rogues i already talked you know i've kind of just talked about all the other classes but what i really really want to do is take a second and talk to you guys about what i feel is the best overall weapon enchantment in the game like hands down the best overall weapon enchantment in the game due to a bunch of factors it's good for single target and AoE, so you don't have to switch out. You kind of get the best of both worlds. It's a lot cheaper than everything else. And it does a really, really good amount of damage. And I'm going to go to the auction house and show you guys the one that I'm talking about right now. And that is the Unparalleled Vorpal Enchantment. Now, the Vorpal Enchantment for a long, long time used to be the best enchantment in the game. And it really hasn't gotten any love lately. It's very, very undervalued in my opinion. I mean, look at this. I mean, I think this guy is crazy listing one for 2 million because the average price of these unparalleled Vorpal enchantments honestly should be around 2.7, 2.8 million. But it's very undervalued as you could see. And at the same exact time, it's very, very underappreciated as well. It says, and on parallel, you strike with an additional 55% critical severity. Critical severity increases the damage your critical strikes deal. Your critical strikes now reduce your target's damage resistance by 3% and damage by 3%. So basically what this does is it increases your critical uh, severity by 55% on everything. Your at wills, your encounters, your dailies, the whole nine. Also, every time you critically strike an enemy, you reduce their damage resistance by 3%, basically ap applying a 3% damage debuff to that target, so you and everybody else around you will do 3% more damage to them, and you will lower the amount of damage they do to you and your allies by 3%. So it has a small, you know, 3% debuffs here and there and buffs here and there, but... The 55% more critical severity to all your attacks is huge. Now, why this differs from the Dread Enchantment is that the Dread Enchantment, it says that it only gives you 80% more critical severity on encounters. So, it doesn't work with your at-wills or your dailies. The thing about Control Wizards is we don't really use at-wills. Most of our damage... 85%, 80% or higher of our damage comes from our encounter powers. So this is going to buff that. Yes, we are going to lose, you know, the extra critical severity on daily powers, but it's not that big of a deal because as a control wizard, we use a lot of encounter powers. And that's why I feel that Dread is going to be the new best in slot weapon enchantment for control wizards going forward into mod 15 and maybe for some other classes as well. But getting back to the Vorpal, if you can look at a lot of build videos, a lot of people that talk about this for different classes, everybody tries to compare the Fey Touched and the Vorpal. The thing is, is that the Fey Touched on single target is actually going to be a little bit better, but not by much. You might see an additional 4 to 6% damage increase by using a Fey Touched on single target than you would over a Vorpal. But then you have to realize that the average price for a Vorpal enchantment is like 2.8 million. And I feel it's extremely undervalued and underpriced. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Vorpal enchantments went up to like 3.5 to 4 million. Because that's how much I honestly feel they should be selling for. But you're going to do only about 4 to 6% less damage on single target over a Fey Touched enchantment by using a Vorpal. And a Vorpal at this current rate... You know, a Fey Touch is a 4.55 million AD enchantment, while well, you could buy a Vorpal enchantment for half that right now. It, you know, it's almost a no-brainer. You're doing like 5-6% less damage, or you could say, you okay, I could buy a Fey Touch and do 5-6% more damage, but spend 100% more? Eh, mathematically, you know, something's wrong. It, it doesn't add up. But here's another big thing about the Fate Touch that I need you guys to understand that I don't know if a lot of you guys actually understand this, is that why I think that the Vorpal is superior to a Fate Touched overall 
is because of its AoE damage. If you look at the Unparalleled Fate Touch enchantment, yeah, you do an additional 27% of weapon damage as psychic damage with your powers. The big thing is, your encounter powers siphon away 20% of your target's damage. This damage is converted into 20% more damage for you. This is a three target AoE. It lasts for 20 seconds and may only happen once every 20 seconds. So basically, it's going to have 100% up uptime. It could last for 20 seconds. It could only happen every 20 seconds. But here's the big thing, which I don't know if a lot of people understand. It says this effect is a three-target AoE, which means, let's say you're in a, a T9, you go up to a pack of enemies, and there's ten enemies there. You go ahead, and the way the uh, Fate Touch work is, it only activates on an encounter power. So the first time you use an encounter power, it's not even going to apply to that encounter power. That encounter power then is going to proc it. But when it procs, it's only going to proc on three targets, because it's a three-target area of effect um, AOE effect. So if there's 10 enemies there, you're only siphoning, siphoning away 20% of the damage from those three enemies and doing 20% more damage to those three enemies. That's it. So the other seven enemies are being unaffected. And then if you kill those 10 enemies, you know, in like eight, nine seconds, then you go to another pack of enemies five seconds later, you're not getting any weapon enchantment procs off them at all because you're still under the first 20 second cooldown of the initial pack of enemies that you just fought so you have to wait till the 20 second thing cools down hit the new pack of enemies and randomly the game will just randomly apply the debuff to three of the enemies that you hit this is great when you're fighting three targets or less like a boss but when you're fighting three targets or more it's not that good and then you got to look at the vorpal the Vorpal is going to give you 55% more critical uh, severity damage against all targets. It has no cap. So that same group of enemies that you're hitting, 10 of them, you're going to do 55% more critical severity damage to all 10 of them. Plus, you're going to be applying that 3% damage debuff and that 3% damage resistance debuff as well to all targets. So overall, I think that the Vorpal is the best weapon enchantment in the game due to a multitude of reasons. A, it's cheaper for now. I do think that it's very undervalued and should be worth at least 3.5 million to 4 million. Secondly, it's great for single target and AoE. Unlike the lightning enchantment that's only really good for AoE, but it's just good for single target. And the Fate Touched, you know, is really, really good for single target, but it's not good for multi-target. The Vorpal is great for both. It really, really is. So you don't have to worry about buying separate enchantments for AoE and single target. You don't have to worry about spending a ton of money. Like I said, if you wanted to get a Fae Touched and a Lightning, you're looking at like 9 million AD. You could pretty much do exactly the same with a Vorpal. Save yourself, you know, like 6 million AD and it's going to be almost just as good. And then again, you won't even have to worry about swapping it out. It's the greatest jack of all trades weapon enchantment in the game. Like I said, due to the fact it's good for single target, multi-target, it does a lot of critical damage, and it's cheap. I mean, like I said, can you get 5%, maybe 6% more damage out of a Fae Touch? Yeah, you might be able to. You might be. But at the same time, is it worth 150% more for 4 or 5%? No, it's, it's really not. And like I said, the Fae Touch is not good at all on mobs it's just only it will only hit three of them and only every 20 seconds you you basically waste a lot of this weapon enchantments procs all the time unless you're fighting a boss that's it but even on a boss a vorpal is going to do damn near just as good on a boss as a fate touched will is it going to be the same no the fate touch is still going to be a tad bit better but overall, you're not only just fighting bosses in this game. You're not only ever just fighting bosses. Dungeons have tons of mobs in them, tons of ads. You're doing campaigns, you're fighting tons of mobs, tons of ads. You're always fighting multiple things, so why not get a weapon enchantment that could basically work for multiple things? So, that's just my opinion. Like I said to you guys in this video, man, it was going to be more or less about, you know, telling you guys some good options and explaining to you guys how a couple weapon enchantments work like i said there is no specific best in slot weapon enchantment in the game because it's all going to differ on what class you play what build of that class you play what powers you use on that class everything but there's a lot of good options out there but if you want a good option that's going to cover everything for you all the time get the vorpal enchantment 
because it's going to be really, really cheap, effective, and good for you for a long time for a lot of different classes. Vorpal could work on pretty much any damage class, any DPS class, and do a substantial amount of damage for you, and you don't have to worry about switching back and forth. Me, personally, I think that the Unparalleled Dread Enchantment will be best in slot for Control Wizards going forward, and maybe for some other classes, maybe for Scourge Warlocks too. Another good thing about the Unparalleled Dread Enchantment as well is it is the only enchantment in the game whose debuffs stack, so that 5% you know, debuff could stack multiple times with multiple people that are using it. So that's another good thing. But anyway, like I said, this was just a video just showing you guys, you know, some of the weapon enchantments, talk about some of the good ones, and letting you guys know that I think that the Vorpal enchantment is the best undervalued, underappreciated, jack-of-all-trades weapon enchantment in the game. I mean, I have been using a Vorpal enchantment on my control wizard for the past, like, month and a half now. I only just bought this Dread Enchantment two days ago because I was reading about the Mod 15 changes. I still own my Vorpal Enchantment. I still have it. It's sitting in my inventory right now. I'll show it to you guys. And I still use it all the time. There it is. I have an unparalleled Vorpal Enchantment. I just bought this Dread Enchantment only due to the fact that I think it's going to be best in slot for Control Wizards in Mod 15. But... I'm still keeping my Vorpal enchantment for now, and I've been using my Vorpal enchantment all this time on my control wizard, because it does a lot of damage. So anyway, man, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. What are some of your favorite weapon enchantments in the game? So on and so forth. Leave a comment. Let me know. I hope you guys did enjoy this video, and if you did, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up like button. And like I said, man, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. And make sure you turn on notifications and tell your friends and your guildmates about me so they can watch my videos and they can, you know, go ahead and subscribe to me as well. So anyway, YouTube, this is the Assist Man, and until next time, I am out.